By popular demand, here is a My Froggy Stuff mashup to help our new Fabs and Besties find some of our favorite videos. This week, our dolls could use a little tender loving care. So we've put together some of our favorite hospital inspired crafts. From a hospital room to crutches, we've got you covered. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. I am going to make a coat for a doll using fabric, buttons, a needle and thread, or a sewing machine. I start by folding over a piece of fabric, creating a fold along the top. Using a doll as a guide, cut a large rectangle with the doll's arm stretched out. With the doll's head just above the fold, make a small mark under the arm. And I made my mark a little bit away from the body because it's easier to size down than it is to size up. Repeat on the other side, Using a ruler, I lightly sketch from the mark to the end of the material. Draw another line going down. Repeat on the other side, making a shape that looks like the letter T. Cut around it, leaving a little extra for a seam allowance. Draw a line down the center. Cut on the line drawn, being careful not to cut the bottom layer. Stop at the fold, then make two small angled cuts at the neck. Trim it from the back at a slight curve. Cut another rectangle of fabric that extends beyond the top of the coat. Stitch around the edges to prevent them from fraying. If using a sewing machine, I would go around the edges with a zigzag stitch. Open the coat to lay it flat. Place the rectangle on top, lining up the bottom edge. Flip it over, making sure to keep everything in place. Pins can be used to hold them together. Starting at the bottom, I'm gonna sew a straight line all the way around the edge using a needle and thread or a sewing machine. Once sewn, cut up the center to separate the sides. Make small cuts around the curve of the neck, flip the material over the edge, then iron it flat to keep it neat. I take the opening for the neck, stretch it out, take a measurement for the collar, which in my case looks like about three inches. Then I'm gonna add another half an inch for a seam allowance. Fold over a piece of fabric, and cut at the measurement. Sew down the sides and across the bottom, stopping in the middle, so it can be flipped inside out, just like a pillow. Use a needle and thread to close the opening. I take the collar and sew it to the edge of the neckline. Using a needle and thread, I go between the layers to come up through the seam. Then push the needle through a tiny bit on the edge and go back down and just work my way across back and forth sewing it right at the edge until the collar is fully attached. Then lay out the coat with the good side facing up, cut a rectangle of fabric, fold it in half, line up the raw edges with the end of the sleeve. Sew a straight line across and finish it with a zigzag stitch. Then straighten out the material to reveal a clean edge. Repeat for the other sleeve, fold it over so the good side is on the inside, and line up the edges. Sew a straight line from the edge of the sleeve all the way down the side. Try it on the doll for size. Now's the time to make adjustments where needed. Trim off the excess, making small cuts in the corners to release the tension. Hem the bottom. I chose to continue the hem going all the way around, up the sides, around the edge of the collar, and then back down to make the edges lay flat. Turn the coat right side out, flip over the collar and lapel, Iron flat to make a simple coat. Sew on rectangles of fabric, only on three sides, leaving the top open to make pockets for a lab coat. Make it a different color and add a long strip of fabric for a belt to make a trench coat. We even added small strips on the sides for belt loops. If the dolls need more room around the midsection, I cut the sides at an angle. Sew on small buttons for added detail to make a designer coat. I can change the neckline for a softer look, cut a rectangle of fabric, fold it in half, making sure it can fit around the doll's head. Sew a straight line along the raw edges, leaving an opening in the middle so it can be flipped inside out. Stitch the opening closed. Once sewn, fold it over, stitch up the side opposite of the fold to make a hood. 
Sew it onto the neckline, just like the collar, to make a raincoat. Have fun altering this design to make a coat for any occasion. And you're done. Happy crafting! going to combine some ideas from our doll crutches video and our doll wheelchair video to make a new doll wheelchair using paper tubes, old CDs and DVDs, glue, hot glue, buttons, scrapbook paper and beads, craft foam, computer paper, toothpicks, and felt. I start by making my paper tubes in the same way we did in the crutches video. Only this time I wrap extra paper around a tube. until it is as thick as the hole in a CD. Using my doll as a guide, on a plain sheet of paper, I begin to trace or draw out a design for the side of the wheelchair. In my design, this is where the seat will be, and this is the very bottom of the wheelchair. Here is the back, this is the armrest, and these are some supports to add to the structure of the chair. I begin cutting and bending the tubes to fit my design. Once all of the pieces have been cut, I begin gluing them together. Repeat until you have two. Begin cutting five more paper tubes that are wider than the width of your doll to glue the two sides together. By gluing three under the seat and two to the back. I cut my large paper tube slightly larger than my chair and I glue it into the bottom corner. For my large wheelchair, I used about five CDs for each wheel. I begin gluing the CDs and DVDs together. I cut a long strip of craft foam and glued it around the edge. I attach the wheels and glue a button to the paper to keep it in place. I cut two more tubes to help hold up the front of the chair. Glue them in place and then glue two buttons to the bottom as well. So now it appears as if our wheelchair has four wheels. I apply glue to a piece of paper Fold it over and crease it flat. Apply more glue and repeat. I continued until the whole paper was folded, curled one end around a pencil, used glue to hold it in place, cut off a small portion, and I slid it onto the bottom of my chair to be the footrest. I added small strips of scrapbook paper for some added detail. I glue beads to the ends of my paper tubes, cut a piece of felt that can fit inside the chair with a little extra, cut four more strips of felt, I glue them to the sides of the felt, place the felt in the chair, and glue the tabs around the paper tubes on the sides, glue the top and bottom. I cut two pieces of thick craft foam, I round off one of the corners, bend the end, Glue it on to the armrest. I wrap a small piece of foam around the handles and you're done. Happy crafting! I'm going to make crutches for a doll using computer paper, toothpicks, glue, craft foam, beads, a pencil, paintbrush, and scissors. I start by taking a piece of computer paper. You can use any color you like. I'm just using white because that's what I have. I take a toothpick and then starting in the corner, I start to curl the paper around the toothpick. And I just roll it, trying to keep it as tight as I can. Now as I get to the end, I stop 
take some glue, apply it all over the exposed side of the paper, and finish rolling. After making several, I brush on a layer of glue, allow it to dry, I cut off the tip, I bend it slightly, about three inches from the bottom, and then I bend it again about an inch and a half in the opposite direction. I repeat until I have two. I cut another tube that's about five and a quarter inches long and glue them together. I use a pencil to mark and measure where to cut the tube to use as a hand rest. I cover it in a piece of craft foam and use glue to secure it. I use hot glue to glue it into place. Ask an adult for assistance if needed. I cut another piece for the top glue it into place, cut another tube that's slightly longer, cover it with foam just as before, but this time I cut small circles to glue onto the ends. I glue it to the top, I glue a small strip of foam to the bottom, I glue another circle of foam to the bottom, use beads to cover the ends. For a smaller doll like a 10 to 12 inch, I cut the paper in half and then roll just as before. The crutches can be custom fit for almost any size doll. I like to stop this middle pole here at right about the knee and the hand rest at the hip. And I cut off the top so that it hits right underneath the arm. And you're done. Happy crafting! I am going to make a stethoscope for a doll using silver pipe cleaners or fun wire. It's a kind of wire that's coated in plastic and mainly used to make jewelry, duct tape, plastic jewels, and white craft foam. Now if I'm going to use pipe cleaners instead of fun wire, I start by trimming off the fuzz until it's nice and thin. Now I can take my pipe cleaner or fun wire and fold it in half. I cut a piece of duct tape, leaving a space at the top. I wrap the duct tape around the wire. I wrap another piece over the lower end. Trim off the excess. With good side to good side, glue a small plastic jewel onto a large one. Glue it to the end of the wire. Curl the ends. Cut small pieces of craft foam. Glue it to the ends, and you're done. Happy crafting! I am going to make a hospital room for a doll using a binder, scrapbook paper and cardstock, pictures of graphs from magazines, fabric and felt, the plastic frame from a sponge roller, duct tape, cardboard, jump rings and elastic cord. If you don't have jump rings, you can try safety pins. I start by measuring a piece of cardboard that is the same size as my doll. Cut it out, cut another piece of cardboard that's the same size as the first. Place one of the pieces of cardboard in the middle of another piece of cardboard. I draw tabs out to the sides. Cut it out. Fold the tabs in on the lines drawn. I cover the front of one of the pieces of cardboard with felt. Cover it with another piece of fabric, trim off the excess, 
so that the center cardboard is still exposed. I cover the other pieces of cardboard in duct tape, making sure to leave the centers uncovered. I bend the fabric covered cardboard for the head and legs. I apply glue to the back side of the unraised portion and glue it to the other piece of cardboard. Glue the piece with the trapezoid tabs to the bottom. I cut two small pieces of elastic cord and glue them underneath the bed. Pull off the rectangle portion of a sponge roller and glue it to the fabric. I made sure to glue it only to the part that bends so that the bed can still be raised and lowered. I apply glue to the inside of my binder to glue on scrapbook paper for wallpaper. I glue pictures cut from magazines onto cardstock. I glue them to the binder with a little bit of elastic string hanging down to make a monitor. I hem the top and bottom of a small piece of fabric. Attach safety pins or jump rings to the top. Put the rings onto the first loop of the binder. I make faux cabinets by cutting pieces of cardboard. Cover them in scrapbook paper and glue it to the binder. Add a few pillows. Repeat on the other side and you're done. Happy crafting! Thank you for joining us for this My Froggy Stuff mashup. Let us know what mashups you would like to see in the comments down below. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Ring the bell so you are notified when we upload new videos every day. Follow us on Instagram at My Froggy Stuff and The Frog Vlog, and we will see you next time. Bye!